this one off. Easy run for LaRoche. LaRoche is off to the races. Touchdown, Jacksonville State. 45 yards to the house. And the Gamecocks take the lead back here on the road. The throw over the middle wide and open. running, Possibly running, cover. wide open. Down the road is Sean Brown. No one is going to catch him. Touchdown, Jacksonville State. The deep ball. Galpin gets it. Fakes a pitch, goes over the middle, no sweat there. Touchdown running. All the way down the field for Jacksonville is Sterling Galvin. Touchdown. Webb keeps it. Touchdown. Jacksonville State. Webb, a low snap. Over the middle, he's got his man in stride. That is Sterling Galvin, and he's going to be in for the touchdown. Joshua Hewitt. Sophomore Hunter dropped it. It's blocked. Bouncing around, picked up, and it's going to be a touchdown. What a season it was in 2022 for Jacksonville State. Final record of 9-2. and two. It was a transition year from FCS to the FBS as they get ready to enter Conference USA. They can put up a ton of points quick. You take a look at the key returners, and they will start their season and conference opener August 26th against UTEP. Please be joined by head coach Rich Rodriguez, offensive line and Traylon Brown, and safety Jeremiah Harris. Guys, thanks for coming to the set. Appreciate you. Hey, nice Thank setup you. we got here. This it's is good. beautiful, it's right? Good. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. All right, Coach Rodriguez, first year heading into Conference USA. What does this mean for Jacksonville State, which now you guys are rebranding as Jack State? Yes, it means a lot, not only for our football program, but for the university and our city as well. It's a, it's a big move up, and everybody understands that, but We've had success at every level. When we were Division II, we won, moved up to 1AA and won, and now the expectation is going to be the same. And it's a bigger challenge. You know, everything, everything is bigger and better when you go to Division I FBS. But I think our guys are ready for it. I know they've worked very, very hard, and we'll see what happens. So last year was your first season as the head coach here at Jack State, heading into year two now. What did you do to prepare to enter into Conference USA and the FBS? Well, the biggest thing was, was irregardless of what our move was going to be, we thought as a staff we had to establish the right environment, the right culture, put our systems in, obviously recruit, and then get our players to know the expectations, the way we're going to have, no matter what league we're going to be in. Now, having the invite for Conference USA, which we're very grateful for, now we know where we're going to be at, where our home is, what our competition is going to be. And our goal every year, every year, our first year, uh, our goal is going to be to, to win the conference. That's a huge challenge. You know, obviously, we were picked seventh for a reason. But at the same time, our guys have high expectations. They know the way we want to work, and we'll see what happens. All right, we take a look at some of the highlights from your offense. It's a very unique offense you run at Jack mm -hmm. State. Spread up tempo. Describe it and how you've built this offense. Well, it started, I'm dating myself here, about almost 30 years ago when uh, we first started doing a spread no huddle. And the tempo has been a big part of it. We've evolved over the time with different personnel groupings. But more than anything else, you know, we, we want to kind of put the pedal to metal uh, for at least three quarters. And if we have a lead in the fourth quarter, we'll milk the clock a little bit. But it takes a big commitment, not only by our offensive guys, but our defensive guys. Conditioning is a huge factor. We pride ourselves in being in great shape and, and training that way year round. In terms of conditioning, how early do you guys start to get ready for the season? Oh, about a week after the last game was over from the la from the previous season. No, we, we don't waste a whole lot of time. I got a great strength staff. And really, it's our players do a good job, especially which was kind of neat now, that the players that we had last year are helped teaching the new players that we got coming in. Hey, this is how the way we do things. You know, we have to have guys that love football. You can't like it. You've got to love it and need it. And fortunately, I've, we inherited some guys like these two that love football, and we've been able to recruit some to add to it. All right, let's bring in your guys. We got Traylon Brown, offensive lineman. You have a very unique story because you entered the season in 2022 as a guard. Your center gets hurt first game of the season, and you stepped in right away to the center position. What was that transition like? Uh, I was always prepared to do it. Um, I always knew that I could possibly go in at center. Um, but, you know, it, was, it wasn't anything that I wasn't ready for. Uh, coach did a good job preparing me to know my calls, know my mic decks and stuff. So I was, I was comfortable. All right, so being the center of this high-speed, up-tempo offense, describe it in your words. What is it like to be the anchor of that offense? It's what uh, Coach Trickett tells me. It's literally like I got to set the tempo. I got to – I have to go faster. And that's um, honestly like what I felt like drives me and what makes me become a better leader because I have to, I have to be the guy. 
Big step up in competition. You now move to the FBS. What excites you the most about coming to Conference USA? Um, just honestly, just showing this, our, our how good we can be. Um, we have a lot of good guys, a lot of great players, um, and we're ready for the competition. Nice, and bringing your partner on the defensive side, Jeremiah Harris, as a safety. You showed the coaching staff back in 2019 just how good you could be. Originally, you came in as a walk-on, then you were awarded a scholarship. What was that moment like for you, getting bumped up, being on a full ride? Uh, it was a great moment, you know. Come from where I come from, it's, it's nothing much, so I had to get it out the mud, and I finally showed the coaches that I can play ball on um, on a Division One level. So it was a great moment, you know, especially to tell my parents that they, they don't have to take out any more loans or nothing for me to go to school. So it was a great moment. Let's take a look at some of the plays here for the Jack State Gamecocks. Defensively, everyone talks about your offense, but defensively, you guys are still pretty strong. You guys are still pretty sound. What does it mean to be the safety, and how does, how would you describe your defense? Uh, our defense, you know, we try to play relentless. You know, we want to have all 11 hats flying to the ball. You know, with me being a veteran safety, you know, it's my job to get everybody in their position, you know, the best way I can. So it just feels good to have everybody returning back on defense. So we just want to keep that same mentality to come out relentless and, and just give it all every game. Coach Rodriguez talks about the conditioning on both sides of the ball. What, what is that conditioning like? You guys get after it after that first game, <laughs> after the last game. He prepares us a lot at practice. You know, going up against these guys at practice, you know, it's, it's very up tempo. It's a very fast offense. So I feel like with him doing that at practice, you know, it helps us a lot, you know, when we get in the game. So when you get in the game, the game kind of slow down. It's not as fast as it, as it is at practice. Tell me what it's like being a student at Jack State. If people don't know much about the university, you're located between basically Birmingham, Alabama and Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. What is it like being a student? Uh, it, being a student at Jack State is, is lovely. You know, everybody is a small, friendly campus. You know, everybody know each other. You know, like you said, it's between Birmingham and Atlanta. So if you want to go to Birmingham, it's nothing but an hour down the road. Atlanta, nothing but an hour and some change down the road. So it's, it's a, it's a Great place to be and great place to attend as a student. No, because they've got 12 years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> we got some true veterans right here <laughs> with J. Ro and Trey, and uh, really proud of, of what they've done. And as J. Ro said, I know I'm interjecting here, but you know nowadays you talk about guys jumping here, here, and there, and I understand reasons why. But here's a guy that's they both got their degrees, working on master's degree. J. Ro might be working on his doctorate. I don't know. He's been around <laughs> long enough, so it, it's great stories for college football. Trey, you guys get an opportunity to play on national TV come October. You'll be the only game in town in the middle of the week for the entire month. What does that mean to you? That's really, it's really cool. Really, good. like, honestly, I didn't expect to, expect to, like, be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of us really expected to, like, like, be on national television. Like, everybody can come watch, and it's really dope. It's really cool. For people who may see you guys play for the first time, what do you want them to take away watching you play on national TV? That we, we play with a hard edge, we play up-tempo, and there's not really anything like Jack State football. Nice, okay. Coach Rodriguez, take me through your offense, some of your key returners, and, and quarterback, who do you think you're leading towards at this point? Yeah, we have four, four guys that start a lot on the other line. You know, Trey uh, lead the part at, at center. Uh, we have some experience at wideout. Uh, quarterback Zion Webb is back for his sixth or seventh year, like, like J. Rowe. I think here. he's actually seven now. Yeah, he's got seven years in, so he's got a little bit of experience. He's, he's older than half my staff, I think. <laughs> but uh, they, you know, the first year putting in the system is always the most difficult because of terminology and the way you do things. And, and last year, the guys did a great job of learning, and we think we can take a next step as far as teaching them. We're going to have new guys as well. The biggest thing we tried to establish since the last year was over is one to bring some competition in for all of our guys because we like to play a lot of players and one of my goals is to play more players than anybody in the country uh, everybody that travels we want to actually play in the games and because we do go up tempo and and take the next step as far as learning not just what we do but what they do uh, from a scheme schematic standpoint so our guys love football that's one thing we take a lot of pride in having guys that love football and we know the competition is going to be higher than it's ever been and that's going to be a challenge but our guys are excited to do it you know we're we're going to give our best and and uh, we may surprise a few folks this year when you get ready for those midweek games in October, how do you adjust practice and just kind of your overall schedule to be ready to play instead of on the weekend, middle of the week? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I've done it before in other stops in my career, played some midweek national TV games, and you just kind of adjust, you know. It's, and I always tell uh, my staff, it's not so big like Wednesday is now your Saturday. 
it's more that your Saturday's now your Tuesday, you know, so you can't treat Saturday like, okay, I'm gonna go out and have a good time. It's a Tuesday night or Wednesday night for you. So your players have to adjust their schedule. And I think we have like four games in 17 days. So they really got to take care of their bodies. And we got to be mindful as coaches. Okay, we may not have a padded practice in the, in the, in the month of October while we're playing these midweek games, but we still got to get ready to play. But it's exciting for us. I think, you know, I told our guys and we told our recruits, and we're going to be on national TV a bunch. And it's going to be that midweek is going to either watch us or The Bachelor, right? So I think, uh, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy watching Conference USA football. I think they'll enjoy watching Jack State. Uh, if nothing else, we're going to be entertaining. And it's going to be fun to watch. Got to show special teams some love. Tell me about special teams, guys returning. How do you guys look there? Yeah, we have our kicker, AK, back, and Jack Dawson, our punter back, our long snapper back. And so we have the, we have the personnel there. And uh, we take a lot of pride in special teams. These guys can tell you that we work hard at it. You know, it's obviously a big point of, of emphasis for the coaching staff. But having, it's like everything else, though. If you got to have the talent first. And we are fortunate. We inherited some talent there, just like we inherited talent on offense and defense. And now our job is to get them to play to their very best. And we think they've gotten better. Uh, I don't want to use the punter at all, if I can help it. But there might be occasions we have to punt. But we hope to use the kicker a little bit more. All right, you ready to get through your schedule? Talk let's about do it. it. All yeah. right, let's take, bring up your schedule on the screen here as you get set for Conference USA, moving up to the FBS. And how about it? First yeah, game we, of the season, you start out with a conference right game against UTEP. Right in UTEP, who's, I think, one of the most talented teams in the league. I uh, saw in their preseason, four of their five offensive linemen were preseason all-conference. And Coach Dimmel's done a tremendous job there. They got a lot of veteran players. That's one thing. They got some veteran players that have played Division I-A football for several years. And so that's going to be a big challenge right off the bat. And then I think it was seven bowl teams, if I think I counted it right, uh, seven bowl teams from last year. And, uh, you know, with several midweek games, the conference midweek games are going to be a whole lot of fun uh, for folks to watch. And then we have a, a big game, South Carolina down in a row. We'll get a little money for that one, just, you know, so you know. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play anybody for some money. You know, give us, give us a couple million dollars. We'll play you twice on Sunday if you have to. But anyway, South Carolina is going to be a good challenge for us. And, it's a pretty, it'll be the toughest schedule schools ever faced, but obviously it's the first time we've been Division One A as well. All right, Traylon, Jeremiah, I want you guys to take a look at this schedule. Can you pick out a game you're most excited about getting ready for the season? They're going to tell you UTEP, right? Okay, this first one. No, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, UTEP, but uh, I get to go back home uh, and play South Carolina and Coastal, so those are that's pretty two South big Carolina games. South Carolina guy. Okay. I say all of them. Yeah. I like that. all of them. There you I go. Like Coach wanted you to say the first game. Well, he's waited seven years to play this kind of schedule, so he's, <laughs> you know, he's pretty excited to have, have this time. But I think all of our players are. We know it's a challenge. You know, there's not been very many teams in the last 25 years, if any, that have made the transition and made a bowl game in their first year. So that's one of our goals, and you know, we think it's attainable. But we got to play really, really good, and we got to get some breaks along the way. Rich Rodriguez, head coach for Jack State, as you get ready for the first season in Conference USA. Good luck this season. Thank you. Appreciate it.